Today on the spot, we bring you all the latest releases both at retail and on the Wii Shop channel. We also go on location to Hawaii to check out Capcom's Captivate event, get a demo of Arkrise Fantasia on the Wii, and also check out the Uncharted 2 Siege DLC. Also, stick around for trivia or else Chris is gonna take it all for himself. Today on the spot. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Today on the Spot for Tuesday, April 20th. I'm Sophia Tong, and joining me is Chris Waters. Hey, Chris. That's me. Here I am. Hi, Sophia. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I gotta say, I've been looking a little sidelong at that stack of books you yeah, got. I know, you've there. been eyeing these things since we got here. They're substantial, they're hardy, they make me want to look at them. They're a comic book, and it's a really nice, like, large me one. I like collecting books, actually. I think that's they're nice slick. giveaways. Yeah, and that's one, as as a guest, you know, a lot of the, the trivia prizes I'm not so invested in. I get I get a lot of, like, sort of swag. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one, I'm like, maybe there's an I'm extra. I'm curious, you want some, maybe? Guy, but know. first, let's get on with the show. We can give All these right, away later. Fine. And we'll set them up for a terribly hard trivia question that only I can answer. Sneaky. But first, we have a demo of Arkwise Fantasia coming up, but let's check in with the GameSpot News Desk and see what's happening this week. Hello everyone, this is your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, April 20th. I'm Tom Magrino, filling in for Tor Thorson, who is totally sitting in his office. It's hard to not flash jazz hands when talking about Capcom's Captivate media event, but fighter fans actually have a pretty legitimate reason to express an overabundance of excitement through their hands. Capcom delivered the long-awaited announcement of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as part of its media event this week. The Fighter, which will arrive for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 next spring, carries on the series tradition of three-on-three -three brawls featuring heroes and villains from the Capcom and Marvel Entertainment universes. Capcom will be sprucing up gameplay with the Evolved vs. Fighting System, which involves a range of frenetic new aerial and hyper combos. It also appears as if the game will sport a visual aesthetic not unlike last year's Street Fighter IV. Of course, the most pressing question remains which fighters will be party to the action. Expect Capcom to take its sweet time teasing those out, but a trailer for the game has shown Wolverine, Iron Man, and the Incredible Hulk on Marvel's side, and Ryu, Morrigan from Dark Star Stalkers, and Chris Redfield from Resident Evil flying Capcom's banner. All in all, 30 fighters are expected to be in the game. Capcom's Captivate event also brought word that Bionic Commando Rearm 2 will swing onto Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network early next year. Also, Akamadin will be prowling on the DS in North America in 2011. All right, everyone, that does it for today. For more on these stories and other news headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Now that you're all caught up with the news, let's find out what's happening this week with new releases. April trundles on with a relatively light release schedule, as this week sees Capcom's Wii exclusive Monster Hunter Try make a splash at retailers and precious little else. Monster Hunter Try brings the series' familiar gameplay formula to a new platform, as players are tasked with hunting a variety of monsters across various environments, with Capcom introducing underwater levels for this latest installment. The game supports both Wii Remote and Nunchuck controls, as well as the traditional Classic Controller Gamepad and the Classic Controller Pro, which also launches this week. The game will be available on its own for $50 or in a bundle with a black Classic Controller Pro for $60. Those wanting the controller but not the game will be able to buy it a la carte in white and black versions for $20. If Monster Hunter Try isn't one's cup of tea, then the week's new release schedule for retail games looks pretty light. The PSP edition of Blood Bowl is expected to make its belated debut in stores, and fortunately a handful of notable downloadable titles are also scheduled to arrive to feed gamers new release appetites. 2K Play's pie-thieving puzzler The Misadventures of PB Winterbottom will make its downloadable debut on the PC, while Sega's arcade remake Afterburner Climax takes off on the Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network this week. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. You know where I wish I was right now? In bed. Yeah, that too, but Hawaii, because Sean and Ricardo got to be there last okay, week. Okay, that's a better answer, and yes, they were there, and yes, I'm jealous. Yeah. They got to see a whole bunch of Capcom games, though. They were there for the Captivate event, which we've got a whole bunch of coverage up for on the site right now. Be sure to check it out. What you won't see there, though, is coverage on the tropical drink Sean ordered that came with a back scratcher. What kind of drink was that? I will tell you when we get back from this whole on location for Captivate.
Aloha everybody, I'm Sean McInnes, this is Ricardo Torres, and we are here in Honolulu, Hawaii at Captivate 2010. This is Capcom's annual preview event where they show off their entire roster of upcoming games, give us a chance to check it out, make some announcements, and even let us talk to some of the developers. Ricardo, we've seen a lot. What's been your highlight? Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. That is Actually, a, it's a big highlight. I could have guessed that. What do you like about that one? Uh, I like that they're making it. Yeah. It's been about 10 years since 2 and people have been asking for it for about 10 years, so they got around to it and it's cool. And it's quite a big step up because it's not a, a, a 2D game, it's you know fully 3D and it's running on the same engine as like Lost Planet 2, Resident Evil 5. They're taking kind of a Street Fighter 4 approach to where it, it's in a fully kind of 3D look, but we haven't seen any gameplay yet. I'm hoping that they're going straight Street Fighter and just keeping it nice 2D style. Now, uh, my personal favorite of the trip is um, similarly predictable. It's Dead Rising 2. As you know, I'm a fan of zombies. I'm a fan of sandbox action games. And you combine those two, and I'm just in love. Uh, they showed off a lot of cool uh, weapon combo stuff. So you run around, you find like two random objects, and you can combine them together into something crazy. Like, I found a water gun. I found a gas tank. I combined them together. I had a flamethrower. There's Tell everybody about your favorite. We all know what it was. My favorite one? Oh, the drill bucket. It's a, it's a metal bucket. You stick a whole bunch of drills in it, inward-facing drills. You stick it on a zombie's head, and um, magic happens. That's all I'm going to say. So those are you know our two highlights. What else did you see that you liked? Uh, I got to see Okami Den, which I'm really happy about, because it's, like, it's an Okami sequel on the DS, and it's coming to the US, which is awesome. And uh, another one that I saw was Ghost Trick. It's uh, by a lot of the same guys who made the Ace Attorney series. It looks really cool. You play a dead guy, you play as his ghost, you possess objects, and you like move around and you try to like solve this murder mystery, really like film noir style, but also with that sort of like uh, sense of humor and 2D hand-drawn animation style that made Ace Attorney popular. And you're a ghost, right? And you are a ghost. It's uh, a little grim, but also really funny, really humorous. It, uh, it looked pretty cool. So altogether, quite a lot going on here at Captivate 2010, but the stuff we talked about just now isn't all that's happening. We got a whole bunch of interviews, a whole lot of demos, and a whole lot of previews. So for all that and more, check out the Captivate 2010 event page here on GameSpot.com. It was called the Tropical Itch. Oh, that sounds fun. You get it? Because it's, uh, you, you know, get a back, back scratch, you scratch it. it. It's yeah. itchy. Uh -huh. You get but. It's weird. I mean, you, someone goes to paradise to come back with the tropical itch. Yeah, let's not you know, let's not go there. Instead, let's check out what's happening this week on the Wii Shop Channel. Bug bites. Is that is that gross? I don't get it. It's a slow week on the Wii Shop Channel, but puzzle gamers should still check out Bang Attack on WiiWare. It's a colorful puzzle game for all ages where players must find identical objects and smash them. Break stuff with your little hammer until you've earned enough points. Then swing the Wii remote to use the big hammer. Bang Attack supports two players, features 40 levels, and is available for 500 Wii points. On Virtual Console, Capcom is releasing Mega Man 4. After saving the world from mad scientists three times, Mega Man has managed to keep the world in peace. Now another scientist has shown up with the intention of unleashing his powerful robots and only Mega Man can save the day. Again. And on DSiWare, the Game & Watch collection continues. This week you can save Donkey Kong from Mario's Cage and Donkey Kong Jr., practice your semaphore memorization skills in Flagman, and do some juggling in Ball. Each of these games costs 200 DSi points. There's also My Postcards, which allows you to send postcards to your friends. Take a picture and write a message to go with it, then save it as a postcard. There's also pre-made themes, collectible stamps, and other things to unlock. My Postcards is available for 200 DSi points. That's it for this week. Check back next time for the latest This Week on Wii Shop Channel. Up next is a little dip into the reviews world for you folks. Tom McShay put together a little video review for the Uncharted 2 Siege Expansion Pack downloadable content. Let's check it out. Naughty Dog is releasing their third expansion pack for Uncharted 2 Among Thieves on Thursday, April 22nd. This expansion pack includes two new maps, a new cooperative mode called Siege, six new skins, and 12 trophies to try to get. This will be available on the PSN for $5.99. The new mode in this expansion is called Siege, and it's very similar to what you found in Survival Mode from the original Uncharted 2. You can play it on any of the maps that you could play Survival with before. And like Survival, it is about killing an unending wave of enemies with up to two of your friends. What makes it so incredible from a cooperative perspective is that you have to work together to stay alive. 
Because the enemies are coming from all angles, you will be hit and you will be grappled, you will be knocked down and your friends have to revive you. And trying to revive your friends while not dying yourself is a really cool element and it makes it a lot more difficult than before. You can play this new siege mode in Plaza, which was one of the original maps in the game, but you can also play it in both of the new maps, High Rise and Museum. The museum level is based on the single player level. It takes place in dusk, so it's a little darker than normal, and you're gonna have to use shadows to stay in the dark and hide from your foes. There's a lot of hidden pathways to access and roofs to climb upon, and it makes it a lot of fun to sneak up on your friends and kill them with a melee attack and then run away before they try to retaliate. The other map is High Rise, which takes place in Nepal based on the single player level. This is completely different from the museum. It is bright and there are buildings everywhere and it is all about your agility. You're gonna have to leap from building to building, you climb up walls, you climb up ladders. So you're constantly moving and trying to gain higher ground and get better position. Though when you do get higher ground, you also risk getting shot because you leave yourself exposed. But you can snipe people from when you stand on the water towers or other buildings. The most unique feature of the high rise is that a helicopter will come in periodically and fire missiles at you. If you're standing on a rooftop, you will die, so you have to be constantly moving and alert. The content in Siege Expansion Pack isn't quite good enough to draw in players who have left this game and moved on to something else. But if you're still enjoying Uncharted 2, what's here is a lot of fun. Siege mode is a great cooperative experience, especially when you're playing with some friends. And the two maps are different enough that they give you unique experiences to kill your friends or team up for Capture the Flag or whatever you want to do. And is it daily demo time yet? Is it, yes, is it? it is. Arc Rise Fantasia. Have you yes. heard of it? Uh, no. It's a Japanese RPG for the Wii. Okay. There aren't too many of them, but this one's a real meaty one, like 60 hours or something. Beefy. So let's check out all the details on Arc Rise Fantasia coming up in our daily demo. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. I'm joined by Jason Hughes, producer at Ignition. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Okay, so you're here to show us Arc Rise Fantasia. Now, what can you tell us about the game? Arc Rise Fantasia. So, we are incredibly excited about this. It is an epic JRPG mm -hmm. uh, that is coming to the Wii uh, this summer uh, in June. Uh, and it's something that, uh, in particular, we're excited about because this doesn't really exist yet on the Wii. We think there's a little bit of a vacuum for this kind of uh, classic RPG, and uh, it's something that we think fans are really going to love. Yeah, there aren't too many right out right now. So let's jump in and take a look. So, uh, so the game supports obviously the, uh, the the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck, uh, but we also support the Classic Controller as well, mm -hmm. uh, which we think is actually a really big point in the game. A lot of people, a lot of users love that, mm -hmm. uh, and also I think really helps with the the classic feel and the classic style of the game that people are used to. So, what's the story behind Arc Rise Fantasia? So actually, the story for Arc Rise Fantasia is, is pretty epic. It's pretty epic and very big in scope. So I will try to summarize <laughs> just a little bit, but truly I, I encourage everyone to, to go through the entire thing. There's a lot of twists and turns and some really interesting uh, plot points and character development. Um, so the story is basically um, the uh, Learc, who is the head of, uh, he, he's a, uh, a mercenary in the, uh, for the Meridian Army in the Meridian Empire. Uh, and he is here our main character in the red, as you can see in this opening cutscene. Um, he has been deployed. Uh, there was an attack of dragons. So he's been deployed. You start off in this airship uh, and end up fighting off one of the dragons. Um, and as you'll see in the cutscene, um, he falls to Earth a little later. I'm not giving anything away. Uh, and he runs into some of the other characters. And really, the story is the journey of him and his friends as yeah. they try to defend the Meridian Empire find out what's going on with, uh, there's also what's called Rogress, yeah. uh, and some of the towns are harvesting them for energy, uh, so there's a little bit of a back and forth between good and evil and what's right as far <laughs> as enslaving creatures for their own benefit. Gotcha. So cutscene looks good, so are there a lot of these throughout the game? So this particular rendered, this type of rendered cutscene, mm -hmm. uh, there's one at the beginning to introduce the story and there's one at the end to conclude the story. Mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of cutscenes within the game uh, that are used in the game engine mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's an incredible amount of uh, dialogue. We have I think it was what over 70,000 lines of dialogue. So here is the very first battle, jumps How into the you really work? quick. So the battle system is, is really complicated or really simple, yeah. depending on how you like to play. So right now, uh, you're basically at 
level one, uh, so your attacks are pretty limited, and plus it's just uh, getting the story going. Mm -hmm. You can have up to four people in your party at once, mm -hmm. and uh, part of what makes the battle system unique is you can set up predefined behaviors. So you can micromanage, you can tell every single character what to do, or you can group them all together as far as, oh, I want to uh, be heavy on magic, I want to be heavy on melee attack, uh, I want this person to be heavy on defense. So you can scroll through those, those selects, the, the pre-selects, uh, select those, or micromanage if you, if you want that level of detail. Yeah, I remember playing a bit of it, and there's like a lot of things in the menu that you can kind of adjust, and there's also like a deep customization system as well. Very much so, very okay. much so. Uh, in regards to uh, the weapon customization especially, mm -hmm. uh, the depth in that and sort of the leveling up uh, and using these gems uh, that you can power up with additional abilities. All right. Oh. So this is one of the first towns uh, that you can come to, and what, what, you, uh, what basically happens is while you're, um, while you're talking with, with everyone and finding out more about where you're supposed to go next, uh, the town is invaded. So let me jump right in here to, uh, to a battle example. Too easy. Piece of cake. So normally the battles, like, enemies are on screen, so you just run into them? You can run into them, okay. which also gives you the benefit of, uh, you know, if you don't want to... Let's do this. If you don't want to fight all the enemies, if you actually want to... Um, you know, if you'd prefer to avoid them mm -hmm. uh, and spend your time uh, in other ways, then you can certainly do that as an option. Let me back up. So you have this Excel attack. Exactly. You start here to take action. Let's do it. So, what so is a Excel it? Act is one of their special abilities. Okay. So you can see in this particular part, in, in this time, I have uh, three people with me. And let's go and... And you see normally there can be four? There can be up to four with you, uh, and it really uh, depends on where you are in the story. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even have guests in your party, uh, but, uh, but who's with you at the time is definitely related to where you are in the story. I heard it's a pretty meaty story. I mean, how long does it take to get through it all? You're looking at, if you want to experience everything in the game, you're looking at easily 40 to 50 hours uh, of, of gameplay. And as I mentioned, that's actually one of the huge things that I like about the game, is the depth of story uh, and the depth of the characters. It's surprising. It may seem a little... Uh, you know, with the, with the style, it may seem very, very cheerful and very light, but the content actually is really deep, mm -hmm. and the story is very, very involved. So what about the strategy in terms of the combat? I mean, right now, it's just kind of... So right now, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, where I am right now in the game, it's still early, so the enemies aren't particularly strong, uh, and they want to... Uh, this is a part in the game where you really want to, to get the player going with the story, so the enemies aren't, uh, aren't particularly difficult. Um, but uh, there is a lot of strategy uh, with how you use all your characters, just with a lot of classic JRPGs. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, unique points of this game is what's called action points. Yeah. So you'll see that up in the corner, it says AP, and every single uh, act that every single person in your party has an action point value to that. So you may have one character do a really strong attack, but that means someone else may not be able to attack. So it's really about balancing everyone's strengths managing with where you are and managing all of that. Great. All right, so when does this game come out and what system? So it is exclusively on the Nintendo Wii, mm -hmm. and it is coming out this summer, June 22nd. Uh, so make sure you, you, you check it out and, and give it a chance. I, people, people are going to love this. All right, well, thank you so much for coming by. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you. And that was our look at Arc Rise Fantasia. Now on with the rest of the show. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's trivia time, and if you're like Chris, you've been eyeing these books since the beginning. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You have to give that back, you know. What? No, okay. I'm, so I'm we're giving done. away these Red Star comic books. So now the question is, what system was Red Star originally for? Now, if you have the answer, you can submit it in the answer trivia module on the side of the page, or email us on onthespot at gamespot.com. <laughs> So that about wraps up another episode of Today on the Spot. For all you Lost Planet 2 fans, be sure to stay tuned because we will have a now playing by the end of the month. And don't forget to check out all our good content from Captivate, the Capcom event we talked about earlier. Check it out on the site. It's right there. There's a lot of it. And I'm really just still talking about Captivate to suppress the jealousy I have about not going to Hawaii. Maybe we'll just go next week. Okay, let's pencil that in. Well, let's do that. With a pencil. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Sophia Tom. I'm Chris Waters. We'll see you guys next time. Fetch me my pencil.
For all you Monster Hunter fans, be sure to pick up Monster Hunter Try this week on store shelves. But let's find out what else is happening. Uh, <laughs> well, what else is tropical is um, this one game called that involves postcards. <laughs> this week on the Wii.